We have experienced a beautiful testimony of what redemption looks like when all is lost and you think nothing good can come out of this. What good could possibly come out of all those years of incarceration, a murdered son, and wondering how does it all fit together and how is there a God of love? And you have seen before you a woman who says to him be praised. And this sorrow will not be wasted. Hallelujah. We've had an amazing time talking about unquenchable faith and developing a, a faith that is going to weather the storms, a faith that looks upward knowing this is not the last chapter. I've read the end and we win. We win and it's going to be good. I want you to take a look at a woman close to you. And if three of you happen to be sitting on a row, you have to give eye contact, all three. If, there, if you can do two, do two. Now wait, wait, you need instruction. Okay, I want you to look at that woman who you've selected. If possible, do this in twos. So pick out who your person is. If you happen to be with three, be sure and look at everybody. You right, ready? And I want you to look at that woman and I want you to repeat after me. Don't look at me, look at her right now. Are you ready? All right, repeat after me. Ready? You. You are. You are a daughter of the Most High King. You are a daughter of the Most High King. You are deeply loved. You are highly favored. Your identity is in Christ alone. You follow the light because he is the light. You are a woman of unquenchable faith. I want to, yeah, you can give a hug. As we, as, we re, as we prepare to return home, I want to share with you what a dear friend of mine told me. His name is Dr. Don Denmark. He lived in Canada, and his precious wife, and he became dear friends to Jean and me. But he was a family physician, and he said one day a man came to him and asked if he would make house calls on a man named Alan. He said, Alan has cancer, and he is not a believer in Jesus Christ, but he has health needs, and he needs your care. Would you be willing to see him on each day and change his dressing? His leg had formed a cavitating abscess, and he needed help, and Don said he would. Well, Don would make those house calls, and whenever possible, he would share Jesus with Alan. But one day, Alan, who was not responding at all to anything he said about the Lord, looked at him and he said, I don't want to hear this God talk. I have somebody in my neighborhood who told me the only reason I have this cancer is because I have sin in my life and I don't want to hear this. And because of terribly wrong teaching, Alan had been totally turned off to the things of the Lord. Don continued to minister compassion and love in Jesus' name day after day, and Alan's physical condition grew progressively worse, and he was eventually hospitalized. And then Don would make hospital rounds every day, and he would see Alan. His usual practice was to go on a run before he went into the hospital, and on one of those morning runs, he said, as I was going down the street, he said, God spoke to my spirit. And he said, Don, today, Alan is going to die. Won't you go one more time and share with him that I sent my only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for him and that he needs to say yes to Jesus before it's too late. Don said the prompting in his heart was so strong when he got to the hospital, he went immediately to Alan's room. But there was a health care professional there, and he felt awkward speaking about such deep things of the Lord in front of this person. And so he left, and he started walking down the corridor again. And again, God's Spirit spoke to him and said, Today, Alan is going to die. Won't you go one more time? And Don pivoted 
in the, the hallway, he went right back into Alan's room, pulled the chair up to the head of the bed. He looked at him man to man, face to face. He said, Alan, I have promised you I will be honest with you, and I must be. You do not have long to live. Alan's facial expression had softened. He said, I know that, Dr. Don. Don said, one more time, I must tell you, God loves you. He sent his son, Jesus. He paid the ultimate sacrifice for all of your wrongdoing when he died on the cross and he rose again. Won't you invite him into your life today? Alan looked at Don and he said, I'm ready now, Dr. Don. And Alan bowed his head. He confessed his sin and invited Jesus into his life. And Don said as he ended that prayer, he opened his eyes and his face was radiant. And he looked at the foot of his bed and he said, Dr. Don, Dr. Don, can you see them? And Don said, can I see what, Alan? He said, can you see the angels? They're all over the foot of my bed and they're singing. Don said, Alan, I can't see them and I can't hear them but I know that they're there because the Bible says angels celebrate every time one person comes to faith. I want you to bow your heads with me right now. And I want to ask you this most important question. And some of you said yes to Jesus last night, but maybe you've been out there all day today and this feels like the most religious kind of gathering you have ever been a part of. And God is saying to you, won't you say yes before it is too late? And as you sit there, if God is speaking to your heart and you feel that rustling within you, are you willing to say, God, right now I come to you. And you can just say this as a prayer right now. I confess my sin. I am so tired of trying to pick myself up by my own bootstraps. I know Jesus died on the cross for me. Come into my life. I ask Jesus into my life and make me new. I want to live for you. I want to say yes to you today. Oh, Lord Jesus, I want to be in your family. Thank you that heaven will be my final destination. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. With heads still bowed. If you've just prayed with me, would you look up and put a hand in the air and say, Carol, I just prayed with you. I've done that today. Thank you. Is there another? Yes, I see you. Is there anyone else who would say, I'm not leaving here without knowing Jesus? Anybody else? Just put your hand up and look up at me and let me know you have prayed with me. We thank you so much for letting us know these three beautiful women. And now I wonder... Is there anybody out there who's going home to a hard situation? And maybe you're not even sure what next steps to take. You, you'd have no idea uh, what God wants you to do, what your course of action should be, and you need prayer in your life for whatever you're going through right now. It is the middle of your own firestorm, and it is hard. Would you put your hand in the air and say, Oh, Carol, I need prayer. I need prayer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. In, in the back. I need prayer for what I face right now. Thank you. Is there anybody out there, you can put those hands down, who would say, I have a loved one. It might be a spouse. It might be a son, a daughter, a grandchild, uh, a coworker. And your heart is so burdened for what they're going through right now. It's, it's a heaviness on you. You know they need prayer. They need help. And you want to be there for that person in the way God wants you to be there for them. Would you just put your hand up and say, that's me. I see hands all over this place. And I just want you to be lifting the name of that loved one to the Lord and ask God for wisdom to know what your action steps need to be. And I want to ask, is there anybody out there who has not walked into leadership when you've been asked because you've felt inadequate? You didn't have the confidence, and God is saying to you today, all you need to say is, I'm available. And you're going to start saying yes when God opens the door. Would you lift a hand up and say, that's me. I've been reluctant. I didn't feel worthy. I didn't feel adequate. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to ask us to remain in the spirit of prayer. Would you just all stand with me right now? I'm going to ask the prayer counselors to come down front. And we're not going to sing another song. We're just going to open this altar for you to pray with sisters in the Lord. 
And I'm going to ask if, if you invited Christ into your life last night or today, just come down on the organ side and there will be women to pray with you and celebrate with you. And if you have one of those tough situations you're returning to, I want to invite you to step out right now and just come over on the, on the piano side to pray with somebody. If you have a loved one you're struggling over, just come right now. Don't, don't wait for me to finish talking. I might never finish talking. Just come. Just slip out of your seat. Take advantage of an opportunity to pray with God's girls and lift that need to the Lord. It is such a precious thing to know you have sisters in Christ to pray with. Don't wait. Just come. If somebody's being prayed over, you just, you just wait a moment and somebody will come and pray with you. And we're just going to linger in this one more minute. If you feel that nudging, you need to pray with somebody before you leave. Step out right now. Don't let embarrassment keep you from coming if you need to pray with somebody. We would love to have you come. It is such a blessing to be able to to know you have that comfort of knowing this is, is not, you're not the only person bearing this burden. Oh, Father, you are such a comforter. You are the God to whom nothing is impossible. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. You are my covenant partner. You are my all in all. Father, I thank you that you love us right where we are. We thank you that this weekend we've had new sisters in the body of Christ. And Lord, we thank you that we have come together as uh, people from many churches on this beautiful island to say we serve Jesus together. We lift the name of Jesus high. We believe that God can rule over the evil in this world and he can bring boundless freedom and restore joy to our lives. And Lord, we cling to you. Lord, help us, as the scripture in our theme verse says, to be cheerfully expectant and that we would not burn out. Lord, help us to keep our faith fire burning as we look at your word, study it, and memorize it, and put it to work in our lives. To you be all glory and praise and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Karen. Ladies, God has met with us here this weekend. Through the love of his son, Jesus Christ, reached out to you. Thank you so much for taking your time to be here. Thank you, my dear sister Nikki <laughs> and your friends. I, the, what a wonderful, moving way to end this. Um, would you love to do this again sometime? All right, we'll put it in the hopper and see what happens. You guys go out with that fire burning in your heart and be a blessing to someone else today.